You can now provide whole home backup with just solar and a battery. No separate loads panel needed via Generac Power Cell. Here to make the pitch is Adam Schroeder, product manager for Power Cell Line at Generac Power Systems. And I said it pretty plainly at the top, Generac Power Cell offers whole home backup with just solar and a battery. And you do it without needing a separate loads panel. So I guess I wanted to start there. How do you avoid that? Yeah, there are two things that come together to really make that possible. One is the Power Cell product um, and the power and the capacity and the capabilities that come with that inverter and that battery system. Really, it's one of the most powerful and longest lasting batteries available on the market. We've got nine kilowatts of power that we can push continuously from a single battery cabinet. And you compare that to the five kilowatts continuous that you get from some of the leading competitors. And you can see why there's um, a story there. And the other thing that allows us to go for whole home backup is the ability to island the whole house. So not only do you need the power to run all of those loads and everything that you want to live comfortably, you need to be able to island away from the utility so you can power it safely. And that's a capability that we just unlocked with our new power cell transfer switch. Uh, it's an automatic transfer switch that allows us to island the whole house, service entrance rated, and it packs a punch for everything that we offer with the power cell product. So that automatic transfer switch is obviously a huge deal, uh, the technology making this possible. Um, can you explain a little bit further how that's maybe different than other uh, hybrid inverters? Like I've heard the claim, you know, islanding from the grid, you know, quite a bit over the last couple yeah. of years. And it could just maybe why this tech is different and what's it doing that those ones aren't. No, that's a good question. And I think fundamentally all transfer switches, all microgrid interconnection devices, everything like that is all trying to accomplish the same thing. You're trying to make sure that you can island the house or take it off of the grid so that you're not sending power to the utility and you're not trying to pull power in. Um, ours just does it more elegantly than anyone else's. What we've done is we've taken the technology that we've built into our home standby products that have been around for 30 years now and we've extracted the good parts of that and we've fused it together with what we need for technology to make it work with our uh, power cell energy storage system. So really it's a tightly integrated product built on solid engineering foundation and a lot of experience in the field. And it allows you to take that energy storage system where in the past we were really setting it up to do a protected loads panel and now transfer the whole house off the utility during an outage. It's something that you know, other companies do and they've got okay solutions for it, but sometimes they're an afterthought and it's not really a core strength of theirs. This is a much easier solution and really simple to wire together. You know, removing that added expense for the homeowner and the added headaches from the installer is a pretty big deal. And then in addition to the transfer switch, because I feel like you're still going to be needing more maybe to handle all the loads that are you know, running in the home. Um, I know you have uh, smart management modules for load management. Could you explain those a little bit? Like how, I guess how they work and then how I'm installing them as an installer? Yeah, yeah. The smart management modules are another thing that we're introducing to the power cell line of products that help you to get more out of that power, more out of that system and provide power to loads that you wouldn't otherwise be able to when you're off grid or when you're in a backup situation. And what those smart management modules allow you to do is still meet the NEC codes that say whatever um, you're trying to back up has to be powered by a source that can provide a sufficient amount of power. So they make sure that you don't end up overloading the system and they make installation a lot easier because these devices, they wire in just on the main conductors, the power line conductors for whatever load or circuit that you're feeding. So between the panel, the breaker that's um, feeding the circuit and the circuit itself, you just wire this in. And those devices, the smart management modules are self, self aware, so to speak. And they're monitoring the system, they're monitoring the power that's coming through them to understand whether or not they need to manage themselves and manage the load. So for instance, let's say I have a smart management module that's on a water heater in my home. I am running happy utilities present, and then all of a sudden something happens, utility drops out. The system islands with the transfer switch, and then the SMMs are sitting there watching to see if the system is going to be overloaded. If the system gets to a point where you have too many things trying to draw power simultaneously, 
that SMM will get a signal from the inverter, which is, it's really looking at frequencies. So the inverter sends a frequency pulse and the SMM knows to disconnect. It'll disconnect, wait for a period for the system re to recover, and then it'll reconnect that load automatically. How long does that process take? It really depends on what the, the stack up of the loads are. In most cases, you're not going to run into a managed scenario. Most of the time you're running with one and a half or two kilowatts of base load in the house, and you have different motor starts and appliance starts that are staggered. So they never stack up to cause an overload scenario. If it does happen to occur where let's say you're running your air conditioner and your water heater kicks on at the same time, and you've got all the lights on in the house, then the process is where it gets into the timing of things. So if you hit an overload scenario, it's going to kick out the, the load within a few cycles, um, making sure that you're protecting the system and you're not running into a blackout. And then after a five minute wait period, there are priorities in which the loads will return. So you can actually configure the smart management modules um, to come back in a priority order. So we can support up to eight of them on a single system and there are eight different priority settings. Each of those are spaced by 15 seconds. So it's making sure that when your loads do come back, they're coming back in a staggered order so they don't start right on top of another. Just to reiterate, this is also um, a setup that will allow for handling those bigger loads that typically are tougher to deal with, you know, startup motors, uh, well pumps, uh, EC, you know, you're not worried about any of that essentially. That's one of the great things about these smart management modules that they allow you to put those on a system with less risk, less concern of it causing a problem because it helps to manage that effectively. So you're giving the opportunity to the homeowner to run appliances that they couldn't otherwise run while also making sure that that protection is in place. But in addition to that, it's two other things that allow us to start those larger loads. So when you're looking at something like an air conditioner, a lot of systems can't provide that motor starting current to help uh, sufficiently support the inrush current for the air conditioner. So a lot of systems are at like 30 amps peak. But with the power cell system, we have a firmware update that's unlocked even more power and we can get up to 50 amps of peak motor starting current. And that's a lot of power. Yeah. And what we've done is we've actually paired that with another device that we're introducing and it's a soft starter device. So the soft starter um, wires in line with like an air conditioner and it'll help to reduce the inrush current by up to 60%. So you can take something like a three ton air conditioner that would normally have an LRA um, locked rotor amps rating of say hundred and it'll drop it down to 40 amps. And that 40 amps is well within the range of what we can start with PowerCell. How intense is the programming of these various things to make sure that, you know, the, you're within startup power and you're managing all the loads? Um, is this something an installer is going to take, you know, like half a day to do or a homeowner has to constantly tinker with? <laughs> no. So the, the programming on the back end is pretty intense. But in, in terms of what the installer or what the homeowner has to deal with, it's very simple. The initial installation of the SMMs have a couple of physical things that you can change. So there's a, a dial on there to set what priority you want it to be again, one through eight. There's a lockout function and a switch there where you can change. So let's say I wanted to back up the whole house, but I had one device like a pool pump um, that I know I don't need to run during an outage. I don't need to use my energy and my battery to support that. I can actually change it to lock out so it will never run during a utility outage. And that's all the more involved it is. And that's all done by the installer at the time of install. It honestly takes seconds to accomplish all of that. And then the homeowner doesn't have to worry about it. It's all automatically managing itself during an outage. Okay, so you've pretty much beefed up every other aspect of the system as well. You know, you mentioned some of it, um, the inverter can handle uh, 9kW of continuous power from a single battery and 11kW from two batteries. Um, and yeah. the battery uh, that you're offering is also rated at 18 uh, kilowatt hours, which is huge. Um, so can you explain more about the battery to me? You know, what is its chemistry and how, how do you compare it to other lithium ion batteries other than just that you know, 18 kilowatt hour rating. So we in the past had introduced the, the power cell product and it came with 17.1 kilowatt hours of total usable capacity. So a fully loaded six module system 
was able to support 17 kilowatt hours. And we've beefed that up. So we've stretched each of our modules, which you can support six in a single cabinet to three kilowatt hours. And that's usable capacity. So you chain those together, you can get 18 kilowatt hours out of a single battery cabinet. And one of the great things about our battery is that it's modular. So you can go and really meet the customer where their needs are. If somebody wants to come in with a, a system that's more set up for energy savings and an ROI, you can start at a three module system, provide nine kilowatt hours of backup and really help to dial in what that ROI and that cost savings is gonna be. But you can also stretch that and you can add modules later. So if a customer starts out with nine kilowatt hours and then a year later decides, hey, we're using more than we thought we were, we wanna stretch, all it is is adding battery modules into that cabinet to get up to the 18 kilowatt hours. In terms of how it compares um, technology wise, it's got nickel manganese cobalt or NMC technology. So one of the standards out there in the industry, you'll hear that one along with uh, lithium iron phosphate. Both are great technologies. The NMC helps to provide a more energy dense package so you can get more, um, more capacity in a smaller area, which is something that all consumers are concerned about, right? How do you get more out of less? And then the other thing that we've done with this um, battery module is we've created a better heating cooling package. So better thermal performance, we're able to operate over a wider temperature range, can go from negative 10 degrees C all the way up to 50 degrees C and still operate. So to really back up a home, is it likely a customer will need a second battery though. Um, and I asked that while I'm, it was a prepared question I had, but the way you talked about it and uh, the, the modules and the way the system is set up, it also seems like it's not as big of a um, decision immediately for the customer because they can maybe start small and it's not like they have to rewire their loads panel. Like, you know, they can kind of adjust on the fly, maybe start small with like the nine KW if they need to, and then expand up, and it's not a, a whole big deal. Um, it's not really a question there, it's just kind of me like working through it in my head, but does that no, make sense? No. You're, yeah. you're touching on all the right points, but I wanna, I wanna make sure I add something to that. So it's, it's an interesting question because in the past, when you're looking at competitive products, you have to add an additional battery to get not only capacity, but power. Because if you're only able to put out five kilowatts, you're not able to run very much. And so that was an inherent limitation of some of our competitive products. And so with the power cell system, being able to put out nine kilowatts or 11 kilowatts, if you've got you know PV and battery available, and then having the 18 kilowatt hours of capacity, that's a lot that you can do. And that's a lot that you can run with a single battery. So during an outage, most outages only last a couple of hours. And so you're going to cover the majority of needs. But the awesome thing about the topology or the architecture of the power cell system is that it's DC coupled and allows you to very easily bolt on a second battery. And so you can take that capacity, take that runtime and extend it. Um, so really, it depends on what the customer needs are. What are they trying to get out of the system? Um, what are what's their situation like? Are they running into outages that are only you know a handful of hours long or is it days at a time that they're trying to stretch. But the power cell system can do it all. Like you, you can start small and, and do something that's more affordable at an entry point. And then you can grow the system as the customer needs change. Speaking of the customer, I guess I wanted to hone in on that as we wrap up here. You know, in the event of an outage, what is the interaction between the homeowner and the system? Do they have to do anything at all? Is it just kind of happening? And can they adjust it on the fly if they felt like they needed to in terms of how they manage their priority loads? Um, just walk me through that from the user side. In general, what we're trying to accomplish, the intent is to limit what the customer has to think about when they go into an outage scenario. A lot of times if you're losing power, the last thing you want to think about is what you have to turn on and off and, oh, I need to pull up this app or I need to go change um, a set point or something like that. So we set up the system so that they're aware of what's going to be on, what's going to be off during an outage, and then try to make sure that we limit anything that's going to turn off. So there's no, no requirement for user interaction. It's all just going to work automatically. And then what about, you know, in non uh, outage situations, you know, you have this battery there um, as a customer, you can be cycling that maybe every day if you want to just 
reduce your, uh, you know, electric bill. Is there an extra layer of interaction there if a customer wants to like really get nerdy about their their usage and maybe play with how the system handles certain loads? Or I don't know, is there just more kind of daily stuff that you're like thinking about what a customer can do here? One thing I'll say is Generac had acquired two companies last year. One of them was Pika Energy. And that was a company that brought the, the power cell um, inverter and battery cabinet to the business. And then we also acquired a company called Nurio Technologies. And Nurio was really more around energy monitoring and management and sophistication of what you can do with the loads in the house. And uh, what I'll say is that there are a lot of exciting things that are coming to those people who want to nerd out a bit around their energy and how they're consuming it and um, really what's going on inside of their house, bringing more awareness to that customer and bringing that level of control. So if you do want to manipulate the system, you do want to turn things on and off. It's not something we have today with the smart management modules, but it's very quickly coming on the horizon. Very cool. That's a good uh, teaser note to end on. I think uh, it's all very intriguing. And I just want to say, you know, thanks for taking the time to make that pitch today, Adam. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Again, I appreciate it. For more on Generac's power cell or to become a Generac dealer, head to the links below and on your way, hit that subscribe button.